sleepapnea.org presents Portraits Living with Sleep Apnea, a conversation with Richard Barber. Richard, when did you know that something was wrong with your sleep? I didn't uh, realize I had sleep apnea. My wife was the one who told me that I did. Um, she's been a, in sleep education for many, many years, and she would tell me that I would snore, and I would deny it. I didn't believe her, you know. Um, and she knew that that was a sign of sleep apnea. So for years and years, she tried to get me to have a sleep study, and I just refused. You know, I, I denied that I had it. Um, so eventually, um, my sleep, uh, I noticed something finally, because I thought I was sleeping fine. I didn't need a lot of sleep, you know, because you know, I just got up and did what I had to do, whether I felt good or not. Um, but I noticed that I was getting fibromyalgia, leg pain, at night when I would lay down. And I couldn't get comfortable, my legs hurt. I thought, oh, well, it must be related to the sciatic nerve. So I would try to you now raise my legs up to relieve the pain um, and getting no relief. And then I noticed that I was gritting my teeth whenever I was starting to fall asleep. So I said, something's not right. So I finally gave in, had the study done, turned out severe sleep apnea. You know, I would stop breathing for upwards of 20 seconds at a time and had no idea I would do that. So they said, all right, you've got it. Teresa, my wife, said, here, put this on, you know, when they gave me my machine. And uh, first night, wore it six hours, loved it. Uh, didn't feel any discomfort wearing it. Woke up the next morning, never felt like this before in my life when I woke up. Clear-headed, energetic, happy, no anxiety, nothing. Uh, I thought, you know, what is going on? This can't be that good. Uh, no more leg pain, no more gritting my teeth. I was like a new person the first night. So... Um, that made me a believer. And for me, I guess I'm one of the lucky ones. Didn't have to jerk it off because I felt like I was suffocating or whatever. Um, so I was so happy I finally listened to my wife. Um, but another thing that has happened in the last, I guess, six months is my brother-in-law who was diagnosed with sleep apnea a long time ago, but wouldn't wear his, his mask, wouldn't even try. And here his sister was sleep education and told him for years, you've got to do this. And he just refused. He was driving drowsy all the time. Um, and it turns out now he has kidney failure, congestive heart failure, COPD, diabetes, and has already lost a toe on each foot, but still refuses to wear it. What are you going to do when somebody refuses? You just got to keep at them, telling them, this will change your life. Give it a try. So that's my story. What other benefits did you notice over time? Like I said, I woke up that first day clear-headed. I wake up every day like that. Um, I feel energetic. I don't have to push through my day. You know, I can go the whole day and not be drowsy, tired, can come home and still get things done. Um, like I say, my, my leg pain's gone. No more gritting my teeth. Um, it's just improved my whole well-being. Uh, my mental faculties are better, and I just feel like a, a new person. Do you regret waiting so long before getting treatment? I can't believe I've refused all those years to listen to her and that I had sleep apnea. 
because I, it seemed, you know, I wasted all of these years where I could have been feeling great instead of just thinking that, you know, this is how it's supposed to be. This is what I guess life feels like, you know, because you have obligations, you have people to take care of and responsibilities. And if you're going through life half awake, you know, everybody's life uh, is affected. Everybody's quality of life. And you think it's only you, but you, your, your uh, well-being and your, your um, ability to do things and get things done and enjoy life is affected by sleep apnea you know, by not getting the proper sleep. And um, so I'm glad that I finally listened. I kick myself sometimes for not listening to her sooner. Maybe, well, it's probably a, a stereotype to say it's just a guy thing, you know, refusing to go to the doctor, having things checked out. But in reality, everybody that comes into contact with uh, a sleep apnea, uh, has to um, make it uh, or choose to do it because uh, you can listen to him and listen to him and maybe I got tired of hearing her nag. I don't know, but uh, I just wish I'd done it sooner. So your advice is listen to your wife? Well, yes, and to other people. It doesn't necessarily have to be your wife because... I think I had had sleep apnea from the time I, I was a teenager. Um, just knowing how, remembering how I felt having to get up to go to school, go to college, you know, getting up to go to work when you just didn't, didn't feel like it and you just, you know, the guy that you push through it, you know, you, you uh, ignore the pain. You don't want to uh, look like you're uh, weak, you know. You want to present, present a strong front and that you're, you're invincible, especially whenever you're, you're young. Has treatment really changed your life? Oh, yes. Yes. Like I say, I feel like a different person. The last year has been great. Actually, it's been about a year that I've been using the machine. And from day one, uh, I, I embraced it. And, you know, didn't look at it as something bad because I've been exposed to, to this uh, syndrome for a long time, this disorder. So what do you say when someone asks you about sleep apnea? Oh, I tell people. I, I don't wait for them uh, to say something or, or, you know, I just come out and tell them, the people that I work with. You know, it's just something I bring up without anybody uh, encouraging me or with um, if I notice something about somebody, the way they uh, are acting or if they talk about how they're not getting good sleep. I, I don't wait for that. I'm just telling everybody that I come across that I have sleep apnea. Uh, so I, I've become really an advocate and I don't wait to to uh, think that somebody might have it. I tell people that I have no idea if they have good sleep or not. I'm just happy and I tell everybody how it uh, changed my life. What are some benefits of the Awake Together Summit? I think conferences like this are important because it makes more of the population aware because this affects every walk of life male, female, uh, you know, every socioeconomic scale, you know, just, and um, you don't have to be obese to have sleep apnea. Maybe that's a, a stereotype too. Just like people think that if you're obese, you're gonna get diabetes. You know, even, you know, well fit people or the, you know, trim people can have this. It, there's no real, outward sign, I think. Everybody could benefit maybe from having a sleep test done. And it could, uh, this way, a conference like this can spread the word and 
make it more um, of like uh, being proactive for your health. Because I think that sleep apnea affects you in ways that people just don't realize yet, you know, and if they were made more aware of it, um, they might seek out treatment or do some research on their own and uh, become more well-informed, just like diabetes. I don't think there's enough information out there about diabetes, and there's really not on sleep apnea. You have to go searching for it or have a physician or a loved one who knows something about it, you know, lead you uh, to finding help, I guess, or, you know, addressing your situation. Because, you know, I never thought I could feel like this. To learn more, visit sleepapnea.org now.